Okay, so once we've got past the um, ultrafiltration stage, what is passing down the lumen, which is this bit down the middle of the tubule, the proximal convoluted tubule, remember proximal meaning close to uh, the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule in this case. What's passing down there is a mixture, a solution of uh, urea and glucose and amino acids and salt at exactly the same concentration as those things were in the blood because it's just been filtered. Now obviously some of those things are too useful to let go through into the urine and so this area, the proximal convoluted tubules, the site of what we call selective reabsorption. Selective because you don't really want to take that urea that you've just filtered out of the blood back into it but you do want to take out the glucose and the amino acids and some of the salts and an awful lot of the water. So the proximal convoluted tubule, when you look at them down the microscope, they look round with little holes down the middle. And the inside edges next to the lumen look a bit furry and we'll see why in a minute. And in between the tubules you've got capillaries and these are the peritubular capillaries. Peri meaning around tubular, around the tubules, capillaries because of capillaries. If we sort of zoomed into one or two of these cells, we can see that they've got features that are going to help to absorb stuff. So the lumen is up here. This is the lumen where we've got our filtrate passing through. And the reason that the inside of that tube next to the lumen looks furry is because each individual cell has a folded membrane and these folds are individually, they call them microvilli. So one would be a microvillus, lots of them microvilli. And sometimes you'll see those referred to as a brush border because they look like a brush, like a hairbrush. And so these are all over the surface of the cell. Obviously their main role is to increase the surface area for that absorption to take place over. We also got some uh, mitochondria, so these cells are loaded up with mitochondria and their function is to produce uh, ATP from aerobic respiration and ATP obviously is a key role in active transport. The uh, tubules themselves are only one epithelial cell between uh, the lumen and the capillary and so that generates a really nice short diffusion pathway. We've got this uh, great blood supply, all of the tubules are surrounded by the capillaries and the capillaries are very close up to the uh, tubules. Uh, there's a couple of other features uh, that you might see labelled on diagrams for you. These, this gap between the cell and the capillary is called the basal channel and very often these, are join, these cells um, are drawn joined together by what's called a tight junction. Now if we're taking things from here to here, the purpose of the tight junction, which is where two adjacent cells share one phospholipid bilayer, so they are actually, there's only one phospholipid bilayer instead of having one there and one there, just one between the two cells. That stops anything sort of leaking back through into the lumen that you're trying to absorb. So it's sort of a, a, a cork to stop that coming back through. So how exactly and what exactly is absorbed? So first of all, the thing that I think everybody knows is that every single bit of glucose in a normal, functioning, healthy individual is reabsorbed at this point. So it's that reabsorption literally means taking out of the filtrate and putting into the blood. Now this happens in the proximal convoluted tubules by a facilitated diffusion and active transport. So it can go in two ways. Uh, both sorts of transport, particularly the facilitated diffusion from the lumen into the cell, is done as co-transport. So actually, not only do you take in glucose, but they're also coupled with sodium ion uptake. 
So without sodium ions, you can't actually absorb glucose into the cells. The same goes for amino acids. You don't want to lose any amino acids. They're quite useful. So amino acids, glucose, co-transported into the cell by sodium ions. Now sodium ions are then actively transported out of the other side so that you've always got a concentration gradient. So you want a low concentration in here. So we've got high concentration out there, low in here of sodium ions. So we actively transport the sodium ions out to make, into their high concentration, maintaining that low concentration so that they'll diffuse through, dragging with them the glucose and amino acids. The other sort of knock-on effect of having a high concentration in the basal channels is of course you've got a diffusion gradient into the capillary and those sodium ions are going to then be taken back into the bloodstream. So at this point most of the sodium ions uh, from the filtrate are going to be uh, reabsorbed. We're taking out all of the glucose, all of the amino acids and because we're moving sodium ions Chloride ions kind of follow a little bit like sheep, making a little bar noise as they go across. So they're just going across straightforward, facilitated diffusion, following the sodium ions because sodium ions are positively charged and chloride ions are negatively charged and there's an inevitable uh, opposites attract thing going on there. So, water, let's deal with water now. The proximal convoluted tubule absorbs, reabsorbs about 90% of the water at this point from the filtrate. Um, so, what's going on here is we are moving solute in the form of soluble sodium ions and uh, glucose and amino acids into the cells and chloride ions, all of those will lower the water potential in here and water will follow, uh, follow afterwards uh, in kind of in the manner of, sodium, of the chloride ions following the sodium about. So if we're lowering the water potential, the water is going to move high water potential to low water potential. As the sodium ions move out on the other side, pulling through the uh, amino acids and glucose with them and the chloride ions, it's going to lower the water potential there. The water potential of the, pro the uh, peritubular capillaries is low anyway because they've just come away from the glomerulus um, and also they're taking the water away so that maintains that concentration gradient. So in the proximal convoluted tubule you've got this constant flow. And what limits that is the length of the proximal convoluted tubule. So for example in a diabetic with uncontrolled glucose, so an untreated diabetic, this filtrate will be loaded after a meal, will be loaded up with glucose that as the filtrate is passing through because of ultrafiltration, pushing it along behind, the glucose concentration might be so high that actually there's still some glucose left at the end of the proximal convoluted tubule. You, it, we call that exceeding the renal threshold, so they, as they, um, it just passes by all the channels, all the channels are full all the time, reabsorbing as much glucose as you possibly can, and there's still some left at the end. Because uh, there's no other place in the kidney that you can reabsorb that glucose, it will inevitably end up in the urine, uh, hence giving you a positive uh, glucose clinistics test of urine for untreated diabetics. So remember, key features, microvilli, mitochondria, remember this idea of co-transport, passive facilitated diffusion, so we've got facilitated diffusion through channels, these are big and charged molecules, we've got osmosis following and we've got a bit of active transport and at the other side the glucose and um, they move either by active transport or by facilitated diffusion uh, depending on concentrations. Okay, that's it.